you received rave reviews. You must know this last December after hosting SNL. Um, that was an interesting show to host because that show aired live the day after the Sandy Hook school shootings tragedy. Uh, so I'm imagining you're prepping for the show all week. And then on the Friday before the live Saturday show, this horrible tragedy happens. Tell me about the mood uh, backstage at SNL and how you dealt with that. Well, you know, you shoot you shoot things that sometimes don't make it on the air. And, and that day on Friday, we were doing two pre-shoots, one uh, for a piece that didn't make it to the air, Malibu High, and the other one was You're a Rat Bastard, Charlie Brown. And we're shooting them both, and I now know that I have to... So as I'm driving to work and I'm picked up, I'm reading about this shooting, and I, I kind of turn off my phone and think, I don't want to read about this. As you know, as the day went on, it got worse. The news got worse and worse and worse and worse and more horrific. And then at one point, Lauren uh, came down and s to my dressing room and said, you know, we're going to have to deal with this. This is getting, it's just getting worse. And then I turned on the news and it was so, and then I thought to him, should we even do a show? And he said, we're absolutely going to do a show. That was never a question. That was never a question. We have to do a show. But the question was, how, how do you deal with it? Do I come out and... Um, talk about it do we abandon the monologue uh if we bring it up too late in the show does it seem like a token feeling and you know i've lauren michaels you know there is a reason for everything there's a reason why you become as iconic as lauren uh, has been for so long and he just came up with this kind of perfect solution and it was very interesting because he phoned me up on Saturday morning. When I left at 2 in the morning on Saturday morning, the day of the show, there was still no knowledge of where we would put this um, moment of recognition. He phoned me up later on 11 and said, you know, something like, you know, normally the cold opening is there to make people laugh and you bring yeah. out the host. We will be making them cry. Do you have a problem with that? And, um, and of course, I didn't. And and it was a perfect uh, way to open the show with really little works. kids singing. And then we just decided then from then on, you just have to entertain. But it was the worst. You know, I had f friends who were in the audience, a friend of mine who has kids in Connecticut who was just, they were like sobbing during yeah. the opening. And Paul Schaefer said he had t tears in his but eyes. But it was so play. beautifully done. And and. Everyone agreed that this was, it was genius. It, it's interesting. So that was Lorne Michaels, eh? Completely Lorne. The guy. Completely he just Lorne. does it. In fact, here's what's even more interesting. After the dress, uh, which is at 7.30, they did the, kids did, you know, sang Silent Night and then go live from New York. And, and, and I said, Lorne, there's something off about it. I don't know what it is. And he said, yeah, I know what you mean. Let me look at it. And between dress and air, he came up with the idea of, after the, they, the kids sing Silent Night, they dip to black, and then they come up and say, live from New York. Again, kind of, you know, the perfect uh, solution. And then you go on to do this show, and you get lauded as the funniest person on the show. I mean, here you walk into, these are supposed to be, this is like the, the cream of the crop right now on SNL, and you walk in and steal the show. If, if Lauren Michaels said to you, Will you be a regular cast member again on, on Saturday Night Live? Would you uh, join? No, I don't. I don't. I think I'd do that, but uh, because you you're know, too big, too too too, too, too famous, and also um, <laughs> I'd want well, a driver. I, he wouldn't give a driver. What? Ser I, but seriously, you're too uh, too famous. Is it would that would be part of it? It's well, it's I like also a, think that one of the reasons that you they say isn't he isn't he good is because you're not there every week. Right. You know, yeah. it, when Bill Hader comes back to host after a couple of years, they'll be saying, "Can you believe there's no one funnier?" <laughs> can Can you describe briefly what it's like to be yelling at Paul McCartney uh, on a show that's beamed <laughs> Do you know what was the most amazing moment of the whole week? What? Not even a, a moment that was uh, realized. But there, there, uh, there was a scene where I have to yell at him, and, and then he sings uh, this song. And at the, at the end of it, and for a moment, and then we, it was cut, I'm supposed to come at the end of his song and s scream at him some more. <laughs> and then we rehearsed that. Then they called dinner break. But Paul is a musician. Paul likes to play. So he breaks da -na, da -na, he, he the whole band Dave Grohl and everything. Da -na, da -na, here's your birthday, and he says, Marty, sing with me. And suddenly I am singing. There's Paul McCartney's head three inches from my head with a mic, and I'm John Lennon. 